On today's JMO with Josh and Joe, we have us in studio again, finally. Yeah, we're back. We're back. We took a we took a week off. Uh Joe had some Joe had some business. International business. International discuss. business meetings. Yes. Yeah. Joe's doing big things these days. Uh but we go through the NBA. Let's see, we do each series. Um we have four, two in each each conference. Um Yeah, we go into pretty good detail about those, huh? There's some good series right now. Yeah, yeah, we're we're excited. I mean, there's the Boston series, not that great. It just you would you would think that though. it's it's a product of the East. Though. Yes. Anyways, then we have some uh, we have some funny funny stories from the league. Yes. Uh, like outside of the playoffs, there's some funny. There's a couple of funny stories, a couple of hires. Um, we talk about the the, the lottery mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> yeah. It's a shit lottery. It's obsolete. Yeah, it really is. Uh, then we move into OT dish. We, we have a couple of good OT dishes actually. They're uh, they're, they're pretty funny. Um, we go into the NFL. Uh, talk some some guys getting extensions. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna see more Jason Kelsey. That's, yes, that's good. Yes, that is a good thing. We're gonna see more Jason Kelsey. Um, He's providing a path for all podcasters. Yes, he is. We we'll, we'll talk. We'll go into detail on that. Um, and then you know the NFL just being the NFL and teasing us. They they got us right where they want us in the balls. In the balls. In the balls. Then we move on to the Kentucky Derby. Um, we have to. We had to talk about this, even though it was like two weeks ago. Um, Unbelievable finish. Fantastic. We go into detail about that. Um, we love the Kentucky Derby is amazing. It's a staple of America. Yeah. It was everything I had hoped and dreamed it would be. Exactly. Uh then we finish off with uh with some golf. Little uh PGA championship preview. Yes. Who um who to bet on and who not to bet on. Yes. Definitely li- tune into that because I promise you my picks are going to be correct. Are going to be correct. They will be correct. This is this might be a first for JMO. Yes, yes, yes. I I have not been more sure about these picks than I have than now. Okay. Yeah. You got to tune in. Tune in. All right. Let's rock and roll. Welcome to JMO with Josh and Joe. It is Tuesday, May 14th, and Joe, it is good to be back. We're back. Good to be back. We uh we, we skipped last week. Um unintentionally, actually. Joe had a uh a work a work trip. Work trip that came up, so he had to go. Um it wasn't we weren't able to uh record, but now we're here. We're back. We're gonna make up for all for the last two weeks. Um a lot a lot has happened since then. Uh Gonna start with uh, that clap was uh, that the clap I, I had there was uh, that was a strong it was clap. A, it was a pop. It was a good pop. It was a good pop. Cl- uh, good pop. Good pop. Basically got the play started. You yes. Know? Yeah. Um, let's start off with the NBA. Let's just jump right into it. Um, playoffs are, are they're they're heating up. It's uh, I think the, this round's been pretty good. The second round been been not not too bad. The first round obviously was uh, it was okay. Yeah, I they mean, had some the the, the the Knicks um 76ers was awesome. Yep. Um but there was I mean like the first round of the NBA playoffs is always kind of nah. Yeah, I mean you just got you got those bad matchups because like if it's if it's like March Madness in a bracket one and done style, that's one thing. But when you're playing like seven games, uh get seven game series, you're going to get the best team yeah. most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Um, yeah, I'd say like 90, 98% of the time you get the best team. Yeah. Pacers have to ar- have an argument against that though. Why? Well, they, w- they beat the Bucks. Yeah, but the, the Bucks didn't have Giannis and they didn't have Damian Lillard for a couple of games. It's an asterisk. Yeah, asterisk. So, um, but yeah, so Boston, Boston took care of, uh, took care of business with Miami. They are now on to Cleveland who took care of business against the Magic in Game 7. Now, that series, even though it went to Game 7, it was so lopsided. Like, they, every game was a blowout. You yes. know what I'm saying? Or, or almost every game was a blowout. Yes. Um, so it really wasn't that good of a series, even though it did go to Game 7. Um, 
I actually, I was surprised about the Magic. Because remember we talked about, I was like, if the Magic can just steal a game and just get some good playoff experience, I think that's a win. But oh, they, a, they got a huge win. A w for sure. Big now, win. Now, they need a, a, piece, a couple of pieces. I, I'm going to say two different pieces. But Banchero is awesome. Jamal Mosley is a great coach. They have young players. It's a young team, up up and coming, which I, you can say for a lot of these, a lot of these teams. Yes. it's awesome. I love I love the trajectory of the NBA right now. It's it's a way going away from the super teams and going towards those homegrown, just basically. I don't know. You you drafted the teams like you'll you'll trade a little bit and then you may sign a free agent or two, but these are homegrown. Teams. It's built teams rather than bought teams. Correct. So, yeah, because honestly, I, when's the first time we've had this where it's a playoffs without Steph, LeBron, and KD? Talk it, about turning a new chapter. Oh, yeah. it's been. I think it's they. I saw that it was like 06 or something like that. Yeah. Um, That's. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah. Long time. Um, But, yeah, no, it's awesome. Boston, uh, Boston, Cleveland's. It's it's been okay. Um, not having Jared Allen sucks, but it's just the the Celtics. I mean, we said this last round. It really didn't matter who came out of the Magic vs. Cavs series. The Celtics are just gonna are gonna destroy them. Yeah, it doesn't help also when Spida is out. Like, Spida out, Jared Allen out. Like it's yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I, I the Cavs. When I look at the Cavs, the Cavs are a team of like rising stars that just are still. Not stars yet, I, I if you do, know what I mean. I yeah, I kind of know what you mean. I just like Darius Garland. He should be there right now. Yes, but he's not. He's not. He's not. I, I and it's kind of frustrating. If I was a Cavs fan, I'd be frustrated with him. Um, Evan Mobley, kind of Mo- the same way. Same way. Yeah. Now they do have Spider. They do have Jared Allen. Um, but yeah, like those two guys, Evan Mobley and Jared. Um, shit, I can't. Darius Garland. Darius Garland. They they should be better than what they are. Yeah, and I I like Donovan Mitchell. I I just I don't know if he play doesn't play well with other me, uh, team members. So like I mean, granted, if I had a choice of having him on my team and not having him on my team, I'd have him on my team. But I I felt like whenever he was out in Game Four, I felt like Darius Garland did a better job of incorporating other players into the offensive game plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas you know Spida kind of. He's just kind of, uh, you know, iso, iso ball most yeah. of the time. Eh, those guys aren't bad. Uh, they did uh, give Boston a nice little scare in game two where they molly them. Yeah. Like from the get-go. I was watching that game. It was from the get-go. They weren't even close. It was weird. Um, But, yeah, I think Boston will win next game. I think, what is that? Uh, it's tomorrow, I think. Um, Yeah, Boston's going to win in five. They, and unfortunately, they'll probably beat the winner of the Pacers Knicks game, which is a good segue. Um, it's it's a tight one. It's a tight one. I mean, it's it's kind of it, it kind of reminds me of the Cavs versus uh, Magic, where they they haven't really been too too close, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Have we already segued over? I'm trying to see where at the. We're in this uh, yeah, I think it's no a, man zone. I think it's a good segue. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're going Pacers, Pacers, Knicks now? Pacers, Knicks, yeah. So, like, the last one, the Pacers destroyed them. Uh, the last two games, the Pacers kind of beat them pretty good. The game three was uh, 111 to 106. Um, but, yeah, it's always it's been all pretty much – none of them have been, like, five points or less. Like, it hasn't been, like, anything stupid close except for game one. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one has a weird feel to it because, like, the intensity and, the, like, the ferociousness of, like, both the Pacers and the Knicks give it very much a 90s feel. But at the same time, the scoring, like, the, if you look at the scores, it's it's one of the higher scoring series this round mm-hmm. in round two. But and so it's more of, like, today's game. So it's it's a weird feeling. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's also, it's also the Knicks are playing with seven guys. When McBride is... is Taking most of the shots on your team, that's a problem. <laughs> Especially when you have Josh Hart, uh, like, and uh, Brunson playing. Like, McBride's taking most of the shots. Yeah. He went, like, three for 11 from three point. Like, I, I'm i sorry. Like, I, I'd rather see Brunson taking that many shots. He took just as many shots as Brunson. Yeah. In game, uh, game four, I believe it was. Well, OG. 
uh, OG was out. Oh, I know. OG's out. M- Mitchell's out. Or Mitchell Robinson's out. Um, Is that a hallmark of a Tom Thibodeau team? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He runs them to the ground. Yeah, it's like you he, he wants you to play as hard as you can until you get hurt. And, like, if you're just a player that just doesn't get hurt, like Josh Hart, he'll just keep playing you. 48 like, minutes. 48 minutes straight. Yeah. For two games straight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, and he did uh, – Tom Thibodeau, he's he's known he's notorious for it. He did it in Chicago. Yeah. That the the I mean the Derrick Rose thing is the is the best example of all time. Like he Derrick Rose shouldn't have been in that game. Yeah. Then when he hurt his knee. He shouldn't have been in the game. But Tom Thibodeau, he that's just that's how he coaches. He gets he wants everything out of you. Every mm-hmm. all one hundred percent. Um the basically the Knicks play like the <laughs> I, I saw that I was watching the game earlier before we started recording. And they were like, yeah, the Knicks have seven guys with double-digit points. The Knicks only have seven guys. <laughs> like, that's it. Those are the only people that are playing. Yeah, there's nobody else. There's <laughs> nobody else. So, yeah. Yeah, they're going to need to put up t- double-digit points. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Um, I just – it's tough. It's tough if you're, like for the Knicks, man. And, like, I was again, I was watching it earlier – the garden, the Madison Square Garden is fucking rocking, too. It is rocking. Dude. They are just like you can almost feel the vibration coming through the TV when that when that crowd is is cheering, dude. Yeah, I, I think one of the best combinations, and we saw this already in the NFL season with their quarterback from New York, but an a Italian player or Italian last name, Divincenzo Dante. Um, if that combination with New York is electric. Yeah. Like, and if you can, like, at least get some plays off, which, honestly, DiVincenzo has actually been, was lights out the first two games. Like, he, absolutely I, I lighten he, it up. I, I think he had 35 in game three. In this series. Yeah. Right. Correction. Yeah, Correction. No, in this I, series. I, I, but no, but I know, like, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I think he had, like, I'm pretty sure on game three on Sunday he had, um, oh, shit, this is. Hang on, I, I gotta look this up. But from watching the games, I would bet all my money that he plays. He played better at the first two games, given there were home games and the the crowd's reaction. Like every right. pizzeria is probably giving him pies for life. For sure, one hundred percent. No, I'm thinking of game three. He had thirty five. Game three? Yeah, game three. You they, said that they, they lost. Yeah, they did lose that game, but. Um, I, but still, but I, I said been, it was on Sunday, but it was on uh, Friday. But he's playing lights out. Yes, playing very well. Um, yeah, he and he's a hustle guy too. He hustles. Yes, he's, he like I think this is all players that just fit right into Tom Thibodeau's system. They just they're all hustle guys. Uh, Tom, you know what? Tom Thibodeau and Jay Wright could pro- are probably interchangeable. Yeah, that's probably what Tom Thibodeau saw. He was like he saw that team and he was like, I want that team. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be my team. Hey, it, it, it it's kind of working. Like if they if he could just keep people healthy, it's it, I mean like it, it's just think if they had Julius Randle too. Mm-hmm. I know like a lot of people are like nah, it doesn't matter if they had Julius Randle or not. Yeah, no, if he if they had Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, OG and OB, like if they were if they were healthy, dude, this I think this would be a cakewalk against the Pacers. Yeah, I, it's almost like that he is modeling that strategy that the NFL is doing nowadays. You know how they've been drafting the college quarterback and wide receiver to keep that ca- same chemistry. Yeah, they're, since it's a smaller team, they're just drafting the entire team. Right. You right. know, or buying or you know just picking buy, up picking pick, up, up the uh, pick up the whole team. Yeah, just picking up the whole team yeah. at a certain point. Now, on the on the contrary, or on the other hand. Pacers are really deep. They're playing they're playing like 10, 10 11 guys. You kind of forget like the players that are on the Pacers. You're mm-hmm. just like, okay, wait, Siakam? Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that trade. Yeah, they, 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 that was like mid-season trade, huh? Yeah. And he's been balling out for him. And then Obi Toppin? Obi Toppin, like, yep. yeah. They drafted him. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh Miles Turner still there, yep. still balling. Still balling. And then they got the young guy, Tyrese Halliburton, fucking de- delicious. Yeah. I still don't understand his mechanics in his shooting. Nobody does. It, Nobody it's, does. It's, it's like so he has weird. Nub, he's it's like he has nubs for hands, and he's like trying to like reposition them as he's going up, and then p- shoots it forward, but it goes in with a punch, like almost with a punch. Mm-hmm. And if if he did that with nubs, he probably still would be a better basketball player than I am. But like, it's just still so ugly. So he can afford to get his hands cut off and still be good, and still be good. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. That mm. 
Um, I don't think it really matters because either one of these teams, whoever wins, will lose to Boston next round. It is very true. It is very true. I just want to see a, a, a New York Knicks versus Boston matchup. I think that would be more fun. That that would be electric. That would be awesome. Um, let's see. Let's get to the Thunder versus Mavs. Let's go to the West. Thunder versus Mavs. It's turning out to be a pretty good fucking series. Uh, I it's it's a lot of back and forth. Like it, it really doesn't make any sense. Cause like I'm sorry. I I don't know where's Kyrie. Where's Kyrie? <laughs> yeah, like I don't like Kyrie Irving had nine points last game. Mm. Like it's been the PJ Washington show. It really has. I I was about to say that's actually what I had in my notes. Luca and Kyrie's player favorite player has to be PJ Washington. Yeah, yeah, they they have to be because there's no way Kyrie would be able to stand for PJ Washington taking what nineteen shots, five eleven from three point. I like. And then and then and Kyrie only going four for eleven, four for eleven at with forty minutes being played. I there that I think that's the reason why they lost. That's that's the reason why the Mavericks lost. You get you got to get Kyrie Irving involved. Like he's got to be more more productive. He's that that's like I understand he had assists, but when he scores more, they win more. Well, I mean that's not very Batman like. Not that's, very Batman like. That's, for him to put up nine points like correct, that. Correct, correct. That's the most Robin thing he's been doing is dishing out assists. Yeah. Now Luka Doncic had a, a triple double last game, so he had he had the assists, but he also had seven turnovers. Um and and he had uh thirty seven bitching out the refs. <laughs> thirty seven complaints. Yes, thirty seven filed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh speaking of complaints filed, did you see the Pacers? They filed like or they 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 sent in like seventy eight um, missed calls mm-hmm. from the series with the with the Knicks or yep. something. Rick Carlisle he was really mad after Game Three, I think it was, and sent in like all these. I think Game Two. Oh, it might have been Game Two. Um, he sent in like seventy eight missed calls mm-hmm. to the re- to the NBA. Yeah. What quicker way to get the refs against you and not on your side than to send in? That many, that many missed calls. Yep, and he started bringing out the uh, the small market team card. Okay, that was as well. Oh, that was the most bullshit thing of all time. Yeah, it was pretty. Shut cringy. the fuck up. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. OKC is the number one, the literally the number one seed. They're playing the Dallas Mavericks. Like the Minnesota Timberwolves were up two zero against the Denver Nuggets. Like, shut the fuck up with the small the small market teams. Rick Carlisle was just being a little fucking bitch. Yeah. It, it was funny, and it was kind of quite karma, if you ask me, that, like, Nick fans were saying, oh, you can't complain about the refs on the game one, and then they were stuck complaining about the refs in game three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Jalen Brosson's uh, last shot. Oh, it's it's classic, uh, just, just classic bat- NBA basketball these days. Yep. Um... Let's see. They had Mavs and Thunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hang on. Oh, I. Uh, this is what I had. Um, Kyrie needs to have twenty-five plus points per game in order for the uh, in order for the Mavs to to win out to win the series to win the series. Yep. And if they want to even have a fighting chance, if they win, if they win the series, if they want to have like a fighting chance against either the T Wolves or the Nuggets. Kyrie has to be putting up 25 plus points a game. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, he the, the best game plan that's been working against the Thunder since they don't have like a big presence down low. I mean, they have Chet who's who can block, but the pick and roll's been working w- great. And I just think Kyrie can utilize that getting to the rim better than than Luka can. Luka's no, don't get me wrong. He's got his way, but Kyrie's a little quicker than Luca at getting to the rim, and those right. alley oop lobs have been really great. Actually, speaking of lobs and you know people up in the air, this series has been like block city. Yeah, there's been so many blocks. There's like double digit blocks for each team and each like, game on each game. Yeah, yes. yeah, for sure. Um, which I'm I'm all here for. There's oh, nothing yeah. like a good block. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I just I was just looking at that. That's the I you know who has kind of emerged um and it's kind of ha- kind of like wreaking havoc for Chet Holmgren is Derek Lively. Derek Lively? Yeah, Derek Lively, he's been playing out of his mind. He's been playing really well. Great player off the bench. Great role player. Love him. 
Oh, yeah. No, he's been doing great. You know who hasn't emerged? Josh Giddy. <laughs> is that a sexual joke no <laughs> no it has it isn't but he's he's literally played like 12 11 13 and 12 minutes when he was averaging 25 minutes there during the season i d- dude i look at that guy i don't know how he's good at basketball i don't know either like if you just give him the like the up and down look test what about him makes makes you think that he's good at basketball? He definitely bluffed his resume. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Like the definitely. interview, he killed the interview process. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> and definitely lied about a couple, quite a few things. <laughs> lied about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, got off scot free on some of them too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, the the series is tied too, too. Like I, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. The next game's tomorrow, and. Uh, Let's see. Wait, they're going to be in in OKC. Yep. Which is, I think they've won one. They've both won one away and won one home. They so, have. They so have. like it's all it's all up in the air for this one, which I'm pretty pumped. I can't wait. I just uh, from a fan's perspective, I hope that Kyrie shoots way more and does way more than he's been doing the last couple of games. Yeah. Actually, I will tell you this. I got a fun story. Uh, so I had a last ditch parlay effort. Uh, been on a bad streak lately, so running dwindle, funds dwindling down. Oh, don't say the D word. You said the D word. I said the D word, dwindling. Yeah, dwindling. That's that's bad. Oh, don't oh, ever sorry. say don't ever say the D word. We'll we'll be bleep it out. We'll bleep it out. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, no, it was it was not not going well. So I put I put half of what I had left on a parlay, and the parlay was just not looking good. Like I had, I, I guess I had Chet Homer, home grid going like seven point five over rebounds. I had what was it? I had Shy going over thirty two points. Shay, Shay, and then I had uh, Luca over nine and a half for rebounds, and then I had what was the last one? Shay for over four and a half assists. And like by halftime, none of those look good. Oh no, they none of them look good at all. Uh, but they came back around, and I got the last two points and the last two free throws from Shea. Nice. It was yeah, actually Luca really had, exciting. Lu- Luca had a bunch of rebounds that game. Yeah, he had twelve. Yeah. Oh, I was I was following it. Okay. <laughs> I was following it very very closely. I'm sure you were. Yeah. And actually, at halftime, I, or at, after the first half, a quarter, I got really really frustrated. Used my motion, so I put the rest of the money on the over for second quarter, and completely just whiffed on that one. Oh no. Yeah. And it, I did it for an alternate or uh, 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 over. Like I only had fifty and a half points. I didn't get there. Oh man. Yeah, but it was fine. I got my I got my money back. It was a plus six hundred uh, parlay, so it was a good return. Oh, there you go. Good deal. Good deal. Um, let's see. Let's get to the T Wolves versus Nuggets. I the Jokic is impossible. He's impossible. He's just he he's impossible to guard because like okay. In the paint, he's uh, he, he's awesome. He'll put up anything. He'll, he's got great moves. He'll and then like in the paint, if you put multiple guys on him, he will dish it out. Yep. He'll, he'll pass it. He'll find the open guy. He, he's literally passed it behind his head, looking forward multiple times. Mm-hmm. And now, now when they take all of that away, he has developed a lob shot that he had <laughs> that he found in his arsenal somewhere. <laughs> he now knows how to lob the ball. Lob it. Like, what do you do? You can't guard him. You can't guard him. You can't stop him. Like, and even if you're like, oh, we'll, we'll do the Michael Jordan and let him get his, he'll put up 40, 50 points. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, he, it, it is impossible to guard Jokic. Yeah, and then to make matters worth, worse, they have perfectly built that team, like, around Murray and Jokic. Yes. Like, they perfectly built it. Like, if you, like, if he goes in, and you decide, like, your big man tries to decide to uh, guard him, basically, back corner, you're just going to lob it up to Aaron Gordon. Yeah. He's just going to be there for the slam. Okay. If, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. If, uh, if like, let's say he that's blocked and they got that all covered, everybody crams into under the goal, you just dish it out to Michael Porter Jr. or Kadavius Caldwell-Pope. Dude, KCP has been playing really well. They're just straight spot-up shooters. Like, you give them enough room, they're they're going to make it. Dude, I so game four was interesting to me because I was watching it and like the the T Wolves started off hot for the mm-hmm. first couple of minutes mm-hmm. and then they went fucking cold. Denver Nuggets scored. It was like they went on like a twenty four four run 
or something like that. Yeah. And then from that point on, it was really it was basically like a double digit lead the whole first half. Yes. Until towards the end. Anthony Edwards made a three. They got it down to seven with like 40, 45, 50 seconds left. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Seven points. They were down by 15 at halftime. Yeah. So they, they, they got it to seven points. They ended up being down by 15 at half. That wow. Jamal Murray fucking half-court shot, The just the whole turnaround, that was what fucking killed the, the T-Bulls that game. Yep. No momentum going into half. All of it going to D- to D- Denver Nuggets. This is two two going to D- going to Denver for Game Five. I'm so fucking stoked for this for this game. It's it, I think both teams have kind of got it right. I un- unfortunately for my future think that the Nuggets have figured everything out and they're gonna they they'll probably win the next two. The Timberwolves couldn't let the Nuggets take two in uh, in, in Minnesota. Correct. That was that was a heartbreaker right there. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's it, now it's even. I mean, no, basically a new, new series. Nuggets got all the momentum. Yep. Uh, and they're going in back to Denver. Um, it's it is kind of weird though that the home team hasn't won yet. That is a weird. It's a little weird. It's an odd series. Odd series. Um, but yeah, we got that game tonight. The Knicks and Pacers. The Knicks are tearing up the Pacers right now, dude. Really? Yeah, dude. It's eighty-six to sixty-four. They're winning by twenty-two points. Um, Jalen Brunson. Oh shit! Jalen Brunson already has thirty-three points in. Uh, and there's three minutes forty-five seconds left in the uh, th- in the third. Just nice. putting the team of seven on on his back. There's literally only <laughs> only seven players that have played. There's literally only seven players that played. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Josh Hart, has he sat a minute yet? Yes, yes. He has sat a minute. Yeah, the only person that has uh, played the whole game is uh, Jalen Brunson. Okay. Well, so. I mean, he's scoring well, so okay. we'll keep, we'll, makes we'll, sense. We'll, yeah, we'll keep the update. Um, all right, let's get some news around the NBA. <laughs> our boy, our boy, uh, Big Baby. I will say this. LSU brings very, very talented players to its school. We may not be the smartest. We're not the smartest. Uh, maybe, maybe not. We're sometimes. I mean, well, Shaq. Shaq is a great businessman. Sh- Shaq might be the dumbest of all. <laughs> no, uh, he's you're, you're he's pretty. I mean, he's, he's he, got money. He, 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 he does have money. You're right. You're right. He does have money. You're you're right. He does have money. Um, you no, know, that was not a very good example, though. <laughs> I made it. I made a case. Um, so Big Baby Davis joins a a, a nice little line of uh, dumb LSU alumni <clears throat> with his insurance scheme that he tried to play with. It, he tried to basically what he tried to do was take advantage of the NBA's insurance policy. So he was basically saying that he was going to the dentist, right? And t- saying that he was paying, like, I think it ended up being a couple hundred thousand dollars hmm. of dentist, doctor bills, whatever that. He never went to the dentist or anything like that. Okay. Um, you get you look at one smile from him and you can you can tell that how how did was he forging this was this this must have been some sort of uh, catch me if you can you know type of scheme forging like you know well no I think he just like basically just told the NBA because uh, I think the NBA like it has a policy to where like they they'll take care of their the players who played in the NBA like the, the I think it's like you know how like you work for a company and they take care of your insurance I think the NBA has something to where they take care of them after they. They do, retire. they do. You have to, you have to play a certain amount of years because remember Tony Snell was trying. He all he had to do was play like a couple more games or something like right, that, or yeah. one more year, and he was going to qualify for that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So Correct. this was after his NBA career, though. After his NBA career, Got and it. I don't think, I think you just because like, it's not like the NBA is going to go watch you get worked on by the dentist. But I figured you would have to have some sort of documentation. I mean, well, yeah, he probably forged the documentation. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So, was, like, yeah. I guess, yeah, he probably forged some type of documentation. Which, dude, you have you played in the NBA for so long, you literally have a championship. 
ring with the, the Celtics, go make money the normal way. What are you trying to scam? How? Why are you trying to scam? I think anything or his career or everything after his NBA career has been anything but normal, um, because he was probably using that insurance to fuel or you know fund his porn career. Oh yeah, he was. He, it, there was uh there those rumors. Those are fun. A little porn stint. He little, had. He had a little porn stint. I mean, big baby probably could. It probably could kill as a name in the porn industry. Ugh, that'd be kind of weird. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you'd have to change that. It's a weird industry. Yeah, it is a weird industry. You're right. I mean, hey. You're right. He probably kind of went off the rails. Yeah, probably. Like, he did some Delonte West shit. Yeah. Yeah, That's that that makes sense. Drug addicts fucking scam people. That's that's how it... Yeah. So, he's going to jail for like 40 months. And this... he Terrence Williams was involved in this shit, too. Like, there was other... There, there's, there's multiple uh, NBA players that are going to jail. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not just Big Baby. Big Baby's the one I wanted to talk about because he's our he he was our boy. He <clears throat> took us to the final four. Yeah, it, honestly, I feel like he has a future documentary in store for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm still waiting on the Jamarcus Russell documentary. Maybe we just should cash in and make documentaries. Yeah, let's just make. We'll only make LSU documentaries. Like there'll be there's a market for it. Yeah. Hell, there's a hundred thousand people that go to the LSU games every fucking week. Yeah, exactly. All right. So yeah, we'll find some people to buy this shit. Just, just get a camera and do uh, you know extend it out for like good ten series. Yeah. Just make some documentary shit, dude. Yeah. It's, all right. We'll know we'll know the answers to the questions, but just make sure we give the suspense for a nice good four or five episodes. Net Netflix already laid out the the blueprint for it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next NBA uh, news I have. Bronny, I think it's looking like Bronny James is staying in the draft. <sighs> Whatever, dude. I, I I think at this point he just wants to play with his dad before he retires. Which, 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 if Cleveland, if Cleveland was smart with the 20th pick in the draft, they would select Bronny James Jr. and make a, basically make a plea for LeBron James come back to Cleveland one last time. One last time, retire, retire with his, uh, with his city, with the city. Yeah, the third time's the charm. They could pitch. Yeah, third time's the charm. That would be like, I mean, come on, Cleveland. It, I, honestly, it would, dude. It, it might imagine, sway me to pull for LeBron again. Exactly, and like, think about LeBron James on that team. Like, he's old, but he's got young guys around him. Jared Allen, Evan Mobley. And then he's got Spider. He's got his Kyrie. Yes. Like he, I wouldn't mind LeBron James on that Cleveland team. Yeah. That I, wouldn't be bad. I have noticed that is actually a trend. I do pull for LeBron when he's in Cleveland. Yes. I yes. actually do pull for him then. I agree. Agreed. Yeah. That's weird because I yeah because I wanted I was pulling for him to give Cleveland their first championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I was right there with you. That's the problem. That's the problem. Is LeBron just needs to be in Cleveland for me to pull for? Him. Yeah. Just go back to Cleveland. Nobody yeah. nobody liked you in Miami. Nobody liked you in L A. Nobody likes you in L A. Like stop. Yeah. Go back to Cleveland. Go back home. Go back home. Yes. So I mean, come on. Is that not bad? Not a bad idea for Cleveland? Pick them at twenty. It's not a bad idea because look at it. You're not gonna get. Anybody really after the top 10 picks in the NBA draft? I mean, if you look at the NBA draft, anything after 10 is usually a you can nitpick it, but most of the time they're not you're not going to find anybody after the 10th pick of the NBA draft. So might as well draft Bronny in a in basically draft LeBron James as well. I mean, this class has faced a lot of criticism so thus far for not being a really good class so yeah. you can you have an opportunity to redraft lebron james yes like how often do you get that opportunity do it cleveland do it yeah um let's see what else we got oh hornets uh Sh- charlotte hornets hire charles lee i don't know who that is it, he's a boston assistant i didn't really look him up um, I, guess. I took a look into him. Oh yeah, what, yeah. What'd you would you find? So he's a lead assistant at uh, Boston, like just like you said. He started off his career with Jeff Peterson at the Hawks. Okay. Um. So who is at uh, Charlotte now? So they mm-hmm. re- they're reunited. Gotcha. He's the uh, lead of player uh, uh, basketball. Dude, I operation. love it. You love connecting the dots. I always do. Um, always do. I mean, they, there's always dots to be connected. Yes. And then this one. This is a product of how bad the puck or <clears throat> the Bucks are doing this year. But he was on the Mike Budenholzer staff 
uh, for the last five years uh. with the Bucks. So as I, and this is a product to the next storyline that we're going to be going on with the uh, the Suns hire. But yeah, now those assistants and everybody are cashing in because it shows how much that coaching stuff really did for that team. And then it got rid of them. Yeah, and got rid of them just because they lost because Giannis was not playing in the playoffs. Ridiculous, but that yeah. is a good segue. Booty, bo- booty holder, uh, my booty holder got hired by the Suns. Yep, yep. Um, Which is interesting. I, okay, I I'm I want you to fire off your takes first because I still don't really know how I feel about it. It's weird. It's weird. It's it's it is weird, right? Yeah, because like. I really think he is a good hire because he's a good coach. He's already proved that in the way that the Bucks performed after him. But, but like, the situation that he's getting himself into. Yes. Is it too much ego f- for him? Probably. I don't know. I mean, like, you're an NBA coach, so you're going to have to deal with, with egos. But think I about just, his su- most successful teams. I understand that, but, like, he's going into a dumpster fire like they were thinking about break they, they were talking about like breaking up the the quote-unquote big three which I- any big three that has bradley bill is is a big two mm-hmm. like you're not bradley bradley bill i'm sorry it's like carl anthony town saying they have a big three no they have anthony edwards and that's it um i they, they don't it's just so much uncertainty right now with the suns that i don't know how I feel about the booty holder. The it, it, his name is Mike Budenholzer, but you know it's it's fun to say booty holder. Booty holder. Um, if they keep all three of those guys together, I think he's gonna have a hard time. I, I think so too. I just he's going to want to run a system that he thinks fits the, their strengths best, and I don't know if they're gonna want that. I think I don't Booker either. and KD and Beal are just guys that feel like they have to take you know 15, 20 shots a game. At least, yeah, and I think they, I, I, I think they're gonna have to break up that, and that's why I don't really have a take on it just yet. Cause yeah. I know I, it's, there's just so much uncertainty with, with with what's gonna happen. Are they trying to bring him in to salvage this big three signings? These big three signings. That I, that's what it feels like. But I, it just it doesn't match the type of players that he's had. I mean, Chris Middleton. I mean, awesome player, but was he like a big head case ever no you hardly ever heard him like with the media or, or anything outside of the, bobby, the basketball court bobby portis bobby portis no. i mean he's got he's got no. glaring eyes no, I mean, he, like he it, plays with a lot of intensity but still exactly not a big not a big ego not a big guy ego. pat connaughton like Giannis, can, honestly is best he's probably the best chance of having like the biggest ego of being the best one of the best nba players in the league right now really doesn't have a big ego no, he, he really doesn't yeah so like I, I and that's some of his best years uh, was with those with those guys and Drew Holiday. I mean Drew Holiday is probably the nicest guy you ever yeah, meet. Drew, Drew Holiday is, is like everybody should want Drew Holiday. Exactly. So I just I, I don't know if this meshes his style. And then my other question is is how many bucks are going to follow? Yeah, how many is true. he going to try to recruit from the Bucks team? Dude, it maybe would, not the big time stars, but well he could. Who is maybe Chris, make some trades? Chris Middle, yeah, Chris, Chris Middleton. Maybe is that is he at the end of his contract? It's probably pretty close. close. Yeah, I'd have I to imagine. Close. I don't know. With Figured, the like, he would probably steal Chris Middleton. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, we'll see. That'll be interesting. I, I again, I don't know how I feel about it yet. I think I'm gonna see. I want to see how things play out. Um, last thing I have on the NBA is uh, the NBA lottery. Congratulations to the Atlanta Haw- Atlanta Hawks for uh, winning the most pointless NBA lottery. No one cares. No one gives two fucks, <laughs> and it couldn't make me happier. Gosh, it, I really just don't even care. Like the Pelicans actually own the rights to the Lakers' first round pick this year. Yeah, or they could defer to next year. Defer. I, I hope to God that they defer to next year yeah, yeah like because too. i don't even care if they have the third 30th pick next year it's gonna probably be better than the 17th this year yeah yeah i agree defer for sure yeah we need to defer this 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 draft class is ugh. I, I feel like we're going to get a nikola jokic out of the second round if anybody pops up you know this year 
this year. From this year. So it's I, I it's got to be we'll some ever sleeper. See Nikola Jokic again. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, there's there's guys that pop out of the second round. Draymond popped out of the second round. Well, I, you know, you said Nikola Jokic. Like, I mean, they, yeah, yeah, he is a great. They, they might get a Draymond Green pop out of the second round. Yeah. I just I feel like it's if somebody's going to pop out to be a star in the league in this draft, it's probably going to be somebody from the second round we just never saw coming. Right. Yeah. I agree. Um. Excuse me. Excuse me. The, I think who was it? The Pistons. They had, they had number five, again for the third year in a row. Yep, Pistons. Yeah. Um, that sucks. <laughs> Especially because you have Monty Williams as your coach. Well, I mean, I feel like they've been so bad that they should have been probably better than fifth most of those years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Like there was no <laughs> they've lottery. They had like the sort of like almost the worst the worst records. Yes. So yeah. I, I, yeah, they kind of lucked out quite mm-hmm. a bit with that, besides lucking out with Monty Williams as their coach. But Yeah, oh, well, yeah, they definitely lucked out on that. Yeah, so Trailblazers, congratulations for having two uh, picks in the first – or the lottery pick on a draft no one cares. Yep, yep, two picks. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Trailblazers, poor guys. Uh, do you got anything else on the NBA lottery? Uh, that's about it. It's – probably the least tuned into one that we've ever seen yeah dude nobody yeah it's just it's also it also kind of sucks because like there's con there's so much contrast between last year's and this year's with Wemby you know being a factor last year um so kind of feel bad but yeah this there's not much talent coming out of this yeah um let's see all right let's get to OZ dish let's see uh on the state in sports history for me 1918 uh, on this date in 1918, <laughs> Sunday baseball is made legal in Washington, D.C. Wow. Yeah. Um. Basically, my take from this is I kind of want to go back. Let's make work illegal on Sundays. Can we do that? Let's go back to that. Okay. I want to I go back to where we didn't work on Sundays. Just completely rested it up. Yeah, and basically Sunday fun day. Okay, Sunday, it Monday. is mandatory to have Sunday fun day. The only people that can work are people who sell alcohol <laughs> and food. So we can have Sunday fun day. Yes, yeah, so we can have Sunday fun day. That's it. Goodness gracious. What you got? All right. Uh, 1938, England soccer team beats Nazi Germany 6-3. Fuck, yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck the fucking Nazis. Yes. So this was an interesting interesting match so this was the last match before world war ii Mm -hmm. uh so this so there was a british ambassador because tensions were kind of high so there was a lot of civil unrest during this time yeah yeah yeah. tensions were high but they thought this would be able to kind of bring people together a little bit and even the england soccer team actually gave the nazi salute during the german uh anthem Oh really? To because, try and like make peace because it was the it was intended to be a sign of yes, like, respect, you know, okay, respect, gotcha. and you know honor uh, for the German culture. A uh, Hitler apparently was supposed to be in attendance, but it changed his mind the day of. So classic, my, classic Adolf, <laughs> classic Adolf, classic. God, right? Man. My conspiracy theory here: he got pissed off about the result and started World War II. Oh, really? <laughs> Spin zoned it to where they were mocking the you know the salute at the beginning of the game. Oh, to all his they people. said they. they oh, he and then said, he got tried. pissed. He's a sore loser. He, he is a sore, sore loser. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Big time sore. The biggest sore loser of the you of, know of, of the planet of history of history human, all time. Of humankind. Yeah. yeah, there really hasn't been a worse a, sore a bigger loser. sore loser. Bigger sore. Maybe loser. Genghis Khan, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, he, but he wasn't a loser. Yeah, but he actually actually won something. He won everything. Yeah. I think I, he won he won like 25% of the world cuz he like inseminated all the all the women. How many SEC championships does Hitler have? He has zero. He has zero. He has zero. Zero. No no, no championship. Enough said. No. Enough said. He's so. a fucking loser. He has zero. But. Um All right, that's a good one. That, that that's a good one. Um in 2016 Gabriel Medina, 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 Medina. Yeah, Gabriel Medina becomes the first surfer to ever land the move backflip in a competition on a surfboard. Yeah, I'm, I'm... it's literally just a backflip. I, I I actually like dug into this and I looked into it. It's literally just a backflip. That's it. 
It's not like it's nothing else. No, no, nothing fancy or anything. It took until 2016 for someone to do it in a competition. I don't know if I'm more impressed that he did that or more disappointed that no one came up with that until now. Well, I, yeah, nobody did it until 2016. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I, that, that was what baffled my mind. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's I'm a sh- backflip. I feel like we've been surfing for a long time we've on planet Earth. We've been surfing Earth. forever, dude. Point Break came out in 1991, bro. Yeah. Like, that is the, like that was the peak of surfing. I-, I feel like the colonists were surfing to, you know, on the shores of America. They probably when, were. Yeah. Well, you know, coming off the Mayflower, it was like, hey, let me get my surfboard out real quick. You know, Christopher Columbus. I mean, there, like, there's been waves up, uh, ever since, you know, land was formed. Yes, exactly. So... so uh, yeah, the Indians were probably surfing, dude. Yes, they were I, like, oh, wah, 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 surfing USA. Oh, wah, wah, wah. I'm sure, like in Egypt, there's probably depictions of you know. Oh, they have hieroglyphics of of dudes just fucking surfing, ripping waves, whipping waves. Probably d- done in in the desert too. Yeah, they, probably a version oh, of dune, it. Yeah, dune surfing, dune surfing. Fuck yeah, dude. So dune surfing's definitely a thing. Yeah, so that's I would have to say that's that's. Kind of impressed, uh, like a little disappointed we hadn't I'm thought a little of that. Di- yeah, I'm a little disappointed. But I'm, I am impressed. Congratulations to him. Gabriel Medina. Yes, for yep. being the first one. Yep, yep. Same. All right. My last OT dish, uh, 1989 was the first, wait for it, Tour de Trump. That's right. I did not say Tour de France. You th- may have thought I said that. It's the Tour de Trump. And if you're thinking, if you're thinking it, I can give you the verification. Yes, it is for Donald Trump. So it was the in 1989. 1989, the Tour de Trump was the bicycle race ran in uh, Atlantic City. This was supposed of course to- it's it was ran in Atlantic City. Yes, yes, of course it was. And you know, brought promoted by and sponsored by Donald Trump. The Tour de Trump. The Tour de Trump. It was supposed to rival the Tour de France. Um, <laughs> Good but, luck. Yeah, it did not. It did not take off as well. Uh, it later became the Tour de Dupont. Uh, Dupont. Ah. Uh-huh. So it was basically just kind of how we do things in America, like corporal, uh, corporate label it. Yep, yep. I would have. Oh, liked... if you corporate label it, it's it's automatically gonna be successful. Well, in America. Yeah, in America. Yeah. So. Correct. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it didn't. It did not rival the Tour de France, like you know, like he he thought he thought. Uh, I maybe thinking the the name, probably, you, probably did it a little bit. Look, uh, uh, us as Americans, we we are suckers for for good names. Yes. So like TikTok, we love TikTok. You we know why love we love TikTok? TikTok? Because it's called TikTok. And then in relation to the sports world, we hated when the Peach Bowl went to the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Yeah, exactly. No, we love we, Chick-fil-A. Don't get me wrong. But you could call it the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. But just we want the Peach Bowl. Peach Bowl. Yeah. Peach Bowl. It's got to be Peach Bowl. It's got to be the Peach Bowl. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes, we are suckers for good names, quick names, and they got to roll off the tongue well. Yes. Tour de Trump does not run. It's too much. Too, too many T's. Today, Junior. Yeah. You know, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um. You got anything else? Uh, that's it. All right, let's get to the NFL real quick. Uh, la, 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 la. Jared Goff. All right, he got he got the bag. Four year, two hundred twelve million dollar uh, contract, one hundred seventy million of it guaranteed. This might be controversial, but I think it was dumb, 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 dumb. Really? Yeah, I don't like it. Too much money. Too much money. Too much money. I I understand that he. Okay, a lot of people have been bringing up the numbers, and they're saying he's a top tier level quarterback the last couple of years, and he's been playing better than most of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Okay, the most of the quarterbacks in the NFL have not been playing well. They this is this is kind of a downtime for quarterbacks right now. We mm-hmm. have our top quarterbacks. They you have your top like twenty percent of quarterbacks in the NFL. But everyone else is is not good. They're not. They have not been playing well. Um, I don't. So I I don't think that because he is one of the like quote unquote top quarterbacks that have been playing the last couple of years. I don't like that. I think he's a he's still a mid level quarterback. I think Dan Campbell has this team playing well. I think they have great a, a really good defense. I think they've been playing. Now, good. Don't get me wrong. Jared Goff is a good player, but he's not worth four year, two hundred twelve million dollar, hundred seventy million dollar guarantee. I can I can agree with that. <clears throat> I just honestly, when I heard the news, I was like, good for him, good for him. I, he's honestly yeah, underrated. Good, good, good for him. He's yeah. a he's an underrated quarterback. 
Uh, it, honestly, he's, di- proved me wrong. I really thought he was going to be a bust. Yeah, he I, and he's a very likable guy too. Yes, he, it's he's not one of those douchebags that you fucking hate. Yes, and so and I thought he would be that douchebag. Everything I thought about him, he became the opposite. So I was like, hey, good for him. He yep. he was able to get paid for it. Yep, yep. I, I agree. I, I agree. I, I do. I, I I like the guy. I think he got paid too much money. Maybe just a little bit, but hey, maybe it was just because you know of what he's been able to accomplish. Honestly, if you go. Uh, after the tw- 2021 trade with Matthew Stafford and uh, Jared Goff, they actually have identical staff uh, or stats. stats. Okay. Except, except the Super Bowl. Except the Super Bowl. So they got to win a Super Bowl next year. He has to. Which I mean, they're they're kind of set up to. They got a good team. They got a great team. Um, let's see. Oh, this is one I'm extremely excited about. Jason Kelsey uh, joining Monday Night Football Countdown on ESPN. Yep. I. Can we, like, give one exception to someone getting drunk on live TV? That would be that would be kind of cool. Please? Yeah. Like, like, just let Jason Kelsey get drunk mm-hmm. and then talk about football. That's all I want. Yeah, that would be great. Maybe even take his shirt off yeah, at one point. Yeah, like, Jason Kelsey being sober and in a suit talking about football is just not the same. Maybe not the same. It's not the same. I, I will say, this actually does bring me hope a little bit. And uh, is podcasting the new outlet into sports media? I hope so, because that would be good for us. I mean, we've seen we've seen McAfee kind of do it already. We've now we're seeing Jason Kelsey. We're honestly seeing Draymond Green make his way. Yeah, Draymond it. Green's been making his way. He probably would be a little bit more so. Um, I saw him on the panel for TNT for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, now that he's out of the playoffs, so and he probably when he retires probably going to do it more so. Yep, yep. Podcast is new outlet. Yeah, we just got to figure out a way to bake, right? Wake and bake. Wake and bake. Um let's see. Let's they all right, so the NFL god they're they're so good at what what they do. They announced the date that they would announce the schedule. Oh, so they gave us a teaser. They gave us a teaser, but not only did they announce that, then they kind of gave us even more of a tease. A more of a tease? They announced some of the games. We were we were in a timeline of teasers, yes. for sure. Yes, yes. I mean, we're because uh, us as a society, we love that shit. We yeah. eat it up. Yeah. Um. So they did. Let's see. They got. Um. Oh, week one. New York Jets at San Francisco 49ers. That is. Um. That's a good one because that's Aaron Rodgers' comeback. Yes. Uh, Dallas Cowboys at Cleveland Browns. I don't know why that's a big one. Oh, that would be Tom Brady's debut. Tom Brady's debut yep. on Fox? Yep, on Fox. Um, And then, let's see. Oh, Green Bay Packers. Week one, Green Bay Packers versus Philadelphia Eagles. That's going to be in Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil on Peacock. Oh, that's, the, that's a Brazil game. That's yep. a Brazil game. And uh, Baltimore Ravens at Kansas City Chiefs. Remaster of the ACC AFC Championship game. That's a nice one. Yeah. Good, good matchup. Good yeah. matchup. And I think, yeah, the 49ers versus Chiefs are in are in week seven. And Brady's going to be on the call. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Right? Uh, week two, Buffalo Bills at Miami Dolphins. That's going to be uh, – that's gonna be a third, the first Thursday fo- Thursday night football game. Okay, Amazon Amazon Prime getting lucky with uh with a good Thursday game. Getting getting better. Getting yeah. Jeff Bezos has been pushing putting in some cash flow. Yeah, Goodell's yeah. way. Right. Yeah, he finally put in enough cash. Yeah. But yeah, no, I I always love it. I, I love it. The NFL, it, it, he'll, they can they can literally get us with whatever they want. Of course. They'll te- they can tease me all day. I yeah. don't care. Uh, you got anything else on the NFL? Uh, that's about it. Okay. Uh, so we had the Kentucky Derby a couple weeks ago. Fucking awesome! It's fantastic. That's what we. That's what I want. I want a photo fucking finish every time. Three horses within a split fucking second of each other. Yes. Congratulations to Mystic Dan. That was awesome. That was great. There's nothing better than you know being dressed up all day, being getting obliterated with a finale finish like that. Exactly. Yes. You literally get dressed up all day for two minutes. For two minutes. And it, I mean, it is considered the uh, greatest two minutes in 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 sports. That, I, I think that's what it is. It's the, I the greatest it. two minutes of sports. I believe it. No. It, yeah. And um, it was electric. Yes. Well, I was at a bar. We were all watching it. Sound was cranked up. 
You can see the degenerates in there just just <clears throat> pretend slapping the ass of the horse with yes. their with the, their 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 booklets. You know, you you got to have the paper copy. Yes, you, the paper copy it just feels feels more real. It, it it's it it feels like better luck. Well, we talked about this last year. This is top five sounds of a of a gay a sport oh, of all yeah. time. Top five for yeah. sure. I mean, when you hear the thundering, you I mean. You feel like you're in the race too. My dick thunders. Your dick thunders during. Yeah, <laughs> it gets fucking hard. Yeah, I'm just like, oh yeah, let's fucking go. Let's go. Yeah, no, it, I feel like a Viagra pill with a face. Yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Um, but yeah, great, great race. Um, we got the Kentucky or the Preakness coming up this weekend. Let's see if Mystic Dan. I I, I wouldn't put my money on Mystic Dan. That was he was kind of a. He was not not favored. He was not favored, it, but he ran a good race. Yes. If you notice, he was on the side, the 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 inner uh, circle, like the entire time, the inner part of the track, like the entire time, and just had a good strategy and was and just made the right move at the right time. Yeah. Um, we'll be we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll cover the Preakness next week. Give it a little. Give it a little another uh, little razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's see. We got the last thing I got. It's PGA Championship coming up. Um. Don't 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 bet on Rory McIlroy. Don't bet on him. Don't bet on him because he always does this. He always wins right up until the the time up until the major gets you all fucking pumped up, gets you all ready to spend your money on him, and then he fucking just fails you. He's not clutch. No. Not no. clutch. Rory's not gonna win. He's gonna be stuck in 2014. Okay. He's. Uh, I'm, I look. I love. I, I still love Rory. He's a great golfer. Awesome. Great. He's so much fun to watch because his drives are incredible. He won't win. He won't win, guys. Don't put your money on him. I promise you. Put your money on Brooks fucking Kepka. Brooks Kepka. Yes. Scotty Scheffler had a kid. He just had a kid. He just took a break. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if he's rusty. He is rusty. Don't put your money on Scotty. He just had a kid. Um, as we saw with kids Ru- ruin everything. Yes, as we saw with Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert had a kid, and then he played like shit. That is true. So that is true. Kids not good for performance. Unborn kids great for performance. Okay. So like, if you just don't have a kid, but you keep one cooking in the oven, then you'll play well. What's the What's the psychological effect on that? Is it like? Oh, I have to like it's that maybe that intensity that I have to like play really really good because my wife could go into labor at any moment. I uh, yeah, I think you're just nervous cuz your wife's nervous and like y'all are both nervous cuz like y'all are both about to have a kid. So it puts you on edge. Yeah. You have so, an edge. So it's like and I guarantee you this this is they you know how like when you start to get to like the end of the third trimester, you can't really have sex? Yeah, that's true. Is it? Yeah, you can't. I don't. I don't think you're supposed to have sex. Oh, okay. I could be completely wrong with that. I we neither one of us have kids, but yeah. I think like, like later on, I, I don't think maybe you can have sex, but they don't really have sex because the girl really doesn't want to have sex. And I, honestly, because the baby can pop out. I, I, well, <laughs> you might hit the baby's head. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How, I don't know how that shit works. Yeah. But sorry, like, sorry, son. But like, yeah, like so, like either like the girl doesn't want to have sex. Or the guy doesn't want to have sex with the girl because she's like three times the size of her normal stomach. Um, and probably more than that, actually. Uh, but anyways, so he, they probably just haven't had sex in a while. Okay. And, and as we learned from Blue Mountain State, the less you have sex and jerk off, the better you play at your sport. Yeah, the more you're, I guess, filled with all the juices. The blood. The blood is not in your dick, it's in your brain. Ah, that's right. See, yeah. So that's how that works. Science. Science. Science, bitches. Um, but yeah, Brooks Koepka is going to win. Do not bet on Roy McIlroy or Scotty Scheffler. That's, that's, <laughs> we went off on a little bit of a tangent. Yeah, so that, that, that's basically what it boils down to. Okay. Yeah. Our golf advice. Golf advice right there. I'm actually looking forward to this. Anything else? I think that wraps it up. Cool. All right. We will, uh, we'll see y'all next week. Love y'all. Later.